and I'm, you, I'm sure you guys have all seen it already. Everyone's opened it. So the box is Teak Bollinger 007 on the side. And um, in case you didn't know... What we want is a Casey Fixon 007. I've assigned you to Station C, Canada. Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Murray with James Bond Canada. Happy New Year, happy 2020. I hope everybody had an awesome Christmas, um, a great New Year's Eve, and uh, today we're going to be talking about, this video is called Bond and Bollinger. A um, couple of shout outs and thank yous first of all. Thank you to all of our YouTube subscribers. We have over 300 uh, subscribers on our channel now and that's kind of amazing. It's like, you know, speaking to a room with 300 people. We love that. We love connecting with all of you. Um, all of our friends out there in the Bond community and a couple of shouts out, of course, to my partner Jeff. His amazing videos from uh, the Switzerland trip with George Lazenby. Check that out as well on our channel. Um, also a huge uh, shout out and thank you to Joe Darlington from Being James Bond who has created our amazing James Bond Canada intro. It's so cool. The first time I watched it, I literally was like, what do we need is an occasional fix on 007. We've assigned you to Station C Can. I'm like, it's amazing. Thank you so much, Joe, for helping us out and putting that. Uh, we use that in our videos now. So I uh, hope you like it. Thank you very much, Joe. And uh, also this is going to um, really kind of... Um, uh, pick up uh, and encapsulate a lot of the content that um, David Zritsky at the Bond Experience, hello David, Happy New Year, um, that he did recently all about Bollinger. I saw you guys drinking the uh, frozen slushies, too bad that happened. I did have a bottle of Bali chilling uh, as well on, uh, on New Year's Eve and uh, thankfully that one didn't end up uh, as a slush fest. So David covered a lot of the content there and all the stuff about Bollinger. I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, Bollinger as um, a champagne, um, the vintage, um, the house itself, and all the marketing campaigns that go along with Bollinger. Um, when it comes to the Bond franchise, we all know that there's product placement and there are sponsors, there's Omega, there's Aston Martin. Bollinger is literally my favorite, favorite tie-in um, with the Bond movies. It's it's so classy, it's so chic, it's so, you know, it, it has a cachet to it, and, and I mean, Bollinger. 1829, Maison Fondée en 1829. Okay, so we're coming up 10 years from now. Bollinger will have been around for 200 years. Okay, their partnership with James Bond has been over 40 years. So that's 20% of the time that they've been around, they've been partnered with, um, uh, with the 007 franchise. Um, you know, people think of um, Champagne and think of, you know, Cristal or Don Perignon and, you know, in the Bond movies before the earlier ones, you know, always commenting on, you know, Don Perignon 53, Don Perignon 55, etc, etc. Um, the big difference, I think, and believe it or not, um, especially in Europe, Bollinger has always been popular. In North America, um, believe it or not, um, a TV series called Abfab, which many of you may know, absolutely fabulous, British TV comedy with Patsy and Eddie, starring no, none other than Joanna Lumley, former Bond girl from On Her Majesty's Secret Service. So, believe it or not, um, Bollinger really took off in that market in the sort of, you know, mid-90s when this TV show from Britain was now broadcast in North America and everyone's just like, okay, what is this crazy two, you know, English women who are totally politically incorrect, just, you know, and they would always refer to Bollinger as Bolly. Right? If they couldn't decide between champagne or a vodka cocktail and they were going either Bollinger or Stalaknaya, she came up with the Bali Stali. Um, I, unless you're a brave soul, I don't actually recommend trying a Bali Stali. They're kind of like a velvet hammer that will go down like velvet and they will hit you like a hammer. You're like toasted after like two or three of them. But uh, yeah, the, believe it or not, the Bali Stali really got people going, okay, Bali, what's Bali? And Bollinger and I actually checked and their sales increased I think about somewhere in 10 to 15 percent of Bollinger in North America after Abfab debut. Um, so a little segue there but uh, back to Bollinger. As you can see I'm kind of surrounded by some of the Bollinger stuff that I have and uh, I mean the reason that Bollinger actually as a champagne it differs itself from a lot of the other champagnes out there is that most people know that um, a champagne is usually um, a mix of two, uh, a non-vintage champagne is usually a mixture of, you know, two relatively recent vintages of champagne with some reserve wine, usually somewhere about five or 10%. Um, the reason Bollinger um, is 
like really textured, has deep flavors, has great bouquet. You know, there's peach, there's blackberry, there's plum, there's just all these amazing flavors and stuff is because um, Bollinger usually uses anywhere from about 55 to 60 percent of reserve wine. And that reserve wine is at least usually five to six years old and sometimes upwards of 20 years old. Um, so that's why Bollinger as a champagne is, you know, it's a really good drink. It's a, it's, it's just beautiful. I love it. Um, on my 50th birthday, I opened up my, uh, 2002, um, Skyfall Bollinger. I drank that for my 50th birthday. Probably the best champagne bottle of champagne I've, I've ever drank it was like totally amazing. So eventually when I open these other ones up, um, I can't wait, um, I can't wait to enjoy them. Um, the really cool thing too about the new Bollinger, the one that's come out for No Time to Die that we're going to show you in a little bit, um, is that it is 100% Pinot Noir grape and it all comes from the, the, the region of Aie, which is A-Y with the two little dots like Noel called a Trema, so Aie in France. And uh, it's the first time that they've used an entire 100% Pinot Noir a grape from that village and from the vintage, basically where, um, you know, Bollinger was founded back in 1829. So it's going to be kind of an amazing, amazing, amazing bottle of, of stuff. Um, there's going to be some thank yous here. Obviously, thank you to Bollinger. Um, a huge thank you to the Trialto Wine Group for hooking me up with these amazing champagne um, Bollinger glasses. There are six of them, and uh, I really can't thank Trialto enough uh, for these, aren't those amazing with the branded glassware there? Totally, totally cool. And uh, I think the reason that Bollinger is such a, a cool partnership and, and kind of my favorite is that it really, to me, it shows the development of product placement um, in the franchise and not just that paid um, you know, dollar value that goes along with, you know, putting, uh, you know, a, an Omega watch in, you know, when Bond actually has to, you know, physically look at his watch, you know, the camera close up and stuff. So um, we're going to start our Bollinger Odyssey today with this. This is, is kind of one of my favorite, favorite things that I've got. I hope you guys can see that. Um, it's a little package of postcards. It says Champagne Bollinger celebrating 50 years of 007. So I got this um, from one of the promo reps uh, in London, believe it or not, just by complete happenstance when I was purchasing my bottle of 2002 Bollinger in London uh, in 2012. So inside this little pouch are a series of postcards. Now the postcards basically follow and show where the Bollinger franchise started um, in the, the Bond movies. So, um, you know, in, in Saint-Monique, when Roger Moore Bond arrives in the hotel and uh, he orders a bottle of Bollinger and Whisper comes in, you can hardly am like, your champagne, sir. Totally funny scene. I love that. So that's where the Bollinger um, franchise kind of started when it comes to the Bond movies. In Moonraker... Um, at uh, I think it's the Aldovandi Hotel or the I've, uh, someone's going to correct me. Put it in the comments. <laughs> um, uh, uh, the the Aldovandi? No, it's not the Aldovandi. It's the oh, it's going to come to me later in the video. But now it's going to bug me for the whole time. I can't remember the name of the hotel she stays at. It starts with an M, I think. Um, the Montavanti. In any case, um, so Bond goes up to um, Doctor Holly Goodhead's room, and she's like. James, why don't you relax? Come over and, and have a drink, right? And at that point, you know, we hadn't got to the product placement where, you know, it was the perfect bottle set out in that camera shot. If you look at it in the distance and you kind of close up, you'll just see that the bottle is sitting in a Bollinger champagne ice bucket. It says Bollinger on the silver ice bucket, which I think is really, really cool because it's that, you know, early stages of product placement. And in that movie, they use the 1969 Bollinger RD because Bond then says to her and kind of leans forward and he's like, you know, if it's a 69, you were expecting me. So right there, we've got that kind of, you know, um, you know, that complete Bond knowledge that he knows everything about everything. He knows everything about gold. He knows everything about diamonds. He knows everything about champagne. So kind of a, a really cool, uh, um, you know, um, 
product placement early where all you see is this sort of, you know, blurred Bollinger on the ice bucket. Check that out the next time you, uh, you watch Moonraker. Um, obviously used also in Octopussy, the Bollinger RD. And then this is where things get really interesting. So in A View to a Kill, right, this is where they use the 1975 Bollinger RD. And on the back of these postcards, each one tells you what vintage was used or what was, uh, you know, what was spoken about in that film. The reason A View to a Kill in 85 is kind of, you know, the, the spark that, that, you know, lit the rest of it is because that's where Bollinger's marketing campaign began. So as you can see here, right, there's the picture of Bond and Stacy, right, enjoying the... The Bollinger and uh, you know at the bottom of the posters I haven't got my glasses on but I think it says you know imported by the Boddington and Wild Company in New York New York so for the American market and this is where the Bollinger um, marketing campaign that we now are all familiar with um, all of the posters and, and everything else 1985 is where Bollinger started their you know print advertising and those to go along with the um, the, the placement of the champagnes in the, the movies. So, really, really cool. Um, right, in, um, and, and I have these, these ones here I have in just sort of magazine print ads. Um, I was, you know, in my late teens, early 20s, so um, this is where you could find those. So these ones I don't have uh, posters of, but there's the, the Living Daylights um, marketing campaign, um, the Bollinger RD 1975, and I love this scene, too, in The Living Daylights because, you know, um, M has given uh, Bond a list um, to go to Harrods and pick up some stuff for Georgi. And, uh, and he comes in, he's like, you know, he opens the basket, he's like, oh, from Harrods, a godsend, you know, he's just like foie gras and everything else. And, and then Bond says, you know, I took a liberty with the, with the um, I took a liberty with the champagne, sir, because the vintage you put on the list was questionable. And then Gorky says, Bollinger RD, the best, right? So it's, it's really kind of, you know, tied into the, the dialogue, the script, the everything, and the, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, Bond knows his champagne. Um, the License to Kill, um, uh, they use the 1979 RD. Um, I don't have a picture right now. I know I have it somewhere um, of the marketing campaign for um, License to Kill. This is just obviously the, the poster, um, but the marketing campaign, um, like it is for this one, this is you know what the actual marketing and print ads look like for, for Living Daylights. Um, this one is just uh, just the poster, but I, I have seen it actually got au auctioned off recently in uh, an auction in London, one of the, the sort of cardboard standees for, for Bollinger. So this is where, um, you know, things really get sort of cool for me in my collection because this is where the, you know, the, the, the print ads and stuff. So I have this on, a, I think it's a 24 by 36 poster, but I have all these in the standee and I really love this, right? And you'll see here, this is the um, Bollinger 1988 Grand Dene, right? That's what's used in, uh, in GoldenEye. I hope I didn't say Goldfinger though, I might have. Um, and on the back here, obviously the 1988 Bollinger Grand Dene. That's uh, same same marketing campaign there. So uh, I've got standees and posters for for all of these. So for uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, for The World Is Not Enough, which is actually hanging on my wall in the in the hallway here, which is why I haven't put it on camera today. And uh, and then this one, and this was one of my favorite favorite sort of posters and looks. In 2002, I loved the, you know, the gun uh, in the ice cube in the posters for Die Another Day. So the same thing here, um, the Bollinger champagne sitting in the ice bucket. And in this one, um, the Bollinger 1995 Grand Dene was used and the Bollinger RD 1961. So that takes us through the, the Pierce Brosnan era. And the reason I show you that one as Die Another Day is because this is kind of one of my favorite things here. So this is a larger version of those standees and uh, as you can see right there Grand Dene 1995 Bollinger and you'll see at the top of course the French child Meurs une autre jour 
So the reason this is really special to me is because I was still working uh, on the cruise ships uh, at the time uh, of, uh, of Die Another Day. Um, and so I wasn't around uh, to, you know, pick up the normal posters and hit the wine shops. And so at this little um, wine shop near the hotel that I was staying at when I was in France, I spotted this and uh, with the French title on it. And so it's the kind of only international thing that I have because I brought this home from me um, from France in my suitcase and it traveled around the world and still made it home in one piece and I kind of still can't believe it but every every time I back my suitcase and we'd go on another uh, you know I'd go on, an, on another contract I'm like oh my god I have to pull this thing out and hope that it wouldn't crack bend or whatever it's always sitting you know flat right on the, the top of my suitcase so Meurve une autre jour, die another day <clears throat> and then that takes us into the Daniel Craig era and the beginning of the the new posters that started with right Casino Royale in 2006 where they used the Bollinger Grandenay 1990 um, Quantum of Solace and the poster is exactly like that this one apparently a very rare poster I'm glad I have one of these the Bollinger Grandenay 1999 from Quantum of Solace. And then, of course, in Skyfall, on the back of this one, it just says Skyfall 2012. And that's as far as it goes. Obviously, this was the 50th anniversary, so this one is a kind of a cool one, celebrating 50 years of 007 with the Skyfall um, and Bond 50 logo on there. So that's where the, the Bond marketing campaign uh, you know, started, and that's how it, uh, it evolved. Um, to where it is today. And now let's get to the champas, shall we, as Patsy would say. So the really cool thing too is despite the fact that, uh, you know, these vintage champagnes um, started, um, you know, in a sort of re reasonable price point, um, right? This was the only one from, uh, from Skyfall. Um, granted, you know, two, three hundred dollars, 150 pounds, something like that. And now Bollinger have, you know, really pushed the, the, the envelope. Um, because, you know, if you haven't seen the video from 2015, look for it. And it's the Bollinger um, Spectre decanter. So it's like the new, uh, it's like the new No Time to Die Bollinger champagne in the, you know, Moonraker, um, the Moonraker sculpture that's something like, you know, 3,000 pounds. So obviously this one has the 2002 code um, on the back and the 007 on the front. So this one I've already drank and you basically just push the button on the bottom and the gun cylinder unlocks. And as I said, I've already drank this one and there's the Bollinger 2002 from from Skyfall. It was delicious. Um, so next is the um, Bollinger from Spectre in 2015. So this one uh, comes in a chiller. So this chiller case, right, says Bollinger 007 and Champagne Bollinger Millissime 2009. So Millissime is what I described before. It's um, it's the fact that it's all taken from one uh, one vintage. So the cool thing about this one is that if you know, obviously you're 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 chilling your champagne well uh, before you before you're ever going to drink it. But if you by chance forget to, um, this chiller will allow you to chill the bottle and it's lined with styrofoam in there so that it will keep it cold for about two hours. So if you happen to be going to a party and you need to have it chilled, you can chill it beforehand and it'll keep cold for two hours. So this is the Bollinger 2009 Millissime. I have not drunk it. It's still corked and capped 
and uh, I, I I'm thinking maybe this one will be popped maybe uh, I don't know maybe when I when I retire or when I win the win the lottery or uh, some some type of uh, of a special occasion I've got a birthday coming up soon but uh, I don't think I'm ready to to pop this baby yet it's just uh, it's beautiful and I'm I'm so glad I have it and obviously this one was the you know relatively reasonable price point of two three hundred dollars um i believe they only made one or two or three of the specter um decanter um and it's i mean it's just freaking amazing i swear to god you guys you have to watch the bollinger video on youtube and it shows them blowing the glass and you know preparing the bottle and putting the seal on and, and etching the the beautifully carved glass um, or I say glass, it's crystal. I believe it's either um, Baccarat or uh, Aura Force or, or um, what's the other, what's the other big crystal? Baccarat, Aura Force, or there's another huge crystal company um, and showing etch. And then of course the bottle goes into this beautiful crystal goblet canter and the topper on the top with the Octopus Spectre logo on it. And so those are the kind of things that, you know, you're, if you're an average person and you can afford to buy, you know, maybe a $200, $300 bottle of champagne, you're going to buy that. If you are a billionaire and you really have the, the cash to put out, that's when you're going to be able to get the, you know, like the, the Spectre um, decanter or for no time to die, right? Um, everyone has probably seen already the Moonraker sculpture. So it's the, the silver sculpture and it's a magnum inside instead of a regular bottle. And it sits like this and it says Moonraker on it. And then it opens up and, and then the, the sort of, you know, rocket struts sit flat to the table. And then inside is the magnum and it's sitting inside a crystal decanter. And that one's about, you know, three or 400 pounds. Um, but for those of us who are not the billionaires, there is this beauty, and I'm, you know, I'm sure you guys have all seen it already. Everyone's opened it, so the box is Teak, Bollinger 007 on the side. And um, in case you didn't know, um, the way this opens up is actually inspired by the product placement of Bollinger in Goldeneye, right? Because that that's what I find so cool about it is that you know like in 1979 all you saw was that you know sort of blurred Bollinger on the ice bucket as they move forward and they really want to put that product forward right in Goldeneye when you know he stops the car and who's that the next girl etc James what am I going to do with you and the console opens and you see that Bollinger RD sitting there and it's it's perfect it's pristine like it's it's chilled it's got glistening drops of dew on it and it's just so that quick pop open of the console in the db5 and then the beautiful shot of the bollinger is actually what inspired this um case so everyone knows that on the inside of the glass are the 25 bond titles um that are etched into the glass um, we all know we just push the mechanism. We're going to be super careful. Is that amazing? Is that like just unbelievable? Like it's so Bond. It's just, I mean, it, I mean, it, I feel like I'm nine years old again, finding a secret compartment in a ring that I, you know, shook a gumball machine for. It's just like literally the coolest thing. And then obviously the 25 is etched into the bottle and, uh, and the bottle is black, which is usually is, is kind of unusual. So, I'm delicately close that back down again. So, um, for the folks in Canada, because we are, after all, James Bond Canada, so they're already available in Ontario and Quebec. Your price point is somewhere around the $250, $300 um, range. The nice part about Bollinger is if you go to the Bollinger website, and a huge thank you to Bollinger for everything they do for the franchise and for all the cool swag that they've given me over the years. Um, really, really appreciate it. it, uh, it they, I think the reason I was able to, to get the Bollinger branded, uh, branded glassware was uh, because they knew that it was going to go to a, to a good home. So the, the 20, um, the 20, uh, 2020 or 20, yeah, 2020, 
um, Bollinger here in Canada, as I said, already available in Ontario and Quebec. Um, not actually available yet in BC. Um, I'm the first one to get my hands on one in BC because I want to be able to do this video. Um, the release is probably going to come uh, in the spring uh, when No Time to Die releases. But as I was saying, the best thing about it is if you go to the Bollinger website um, and you pick your country, um, there's a tab where you can go to distributors. And then you pick your country and it'll show you where the distributors are in your province uh, for Bollinger. So whether it's uh, you know a particular distributor here in BC like Trialto, or um, I forget the, the I, I know I've, there's, the distributor in Ontario is up in Huntsville somewhere. I forget, uh, forget the name of the company, um, but obviously already on the LCBO website um, and available for purchase because I know uh, my buddy Jeff um, already has a couple and um, Huge shout out, Happy New Year to you, Jeff, as well, if I haven't said so already. Um, and so you should be able to find the Bollinger here in Canada to purchase. In BC, the price point on it is going to be about $400. Um, really looking forward to next spring with more Bollinger events um, coming up. Um, and uh, I'm hoping, really cross my fingers, I know that they're scheduled to get a couple of those really expensive, gorgeous Moonraker ones here in the province for people who can afford it. I think there's maybe one or two coming. So I'm really hoping that uh, in the spring um, I get an up close and personal look with that new uh, Bollinger that's going to be in the, the Moonraker case. I can't wait to show it to you guys. And uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video on my little uh, take on Bollinger and Bond. Uh, why I love it so much. Why I think it's one of the really coolest um, partnerships. Uh, it separates itself from some of the other, you know, maybe more high-end stuff. I mean, you can go buy a bottle of champagne, but you can't always go and buy a, a, an Aston Martin. Um, thank you again to all of our subscribers. Um, if you like our videos and you want to share them, please do hit the like buttons, the subscribe buttons at the bottom of our channel. And uh, also put in the comments and, and tell us what other types of videos you'd like to see. I've got a really large collection of stuff. So maybe someone's favorite movie is Goldfinger and they would really want to see all of the cool things that I have that pertain to Goldfinger. Or they want to talk about the Omega partnership or whatever. Any ideas you have, any comments, any feedback, um, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks again to all of our uh, friends out in the Bond community. We love all of you. We're fans of everybody. We love uh, seeing all your amazing content. And as we ramp up to No Time to Die in April, um, we're going to plan some more videos and have some great more stuff for you. So thanks very much, guys, for watching. And uh, have yourselves a great day. Take care.